In this presentation, I plan to discuss the evaluation of an integral of a kind that might arise when we're looking for a Fourier series of a simple linear function. I've chosen the function f of t equals t plus 2, defined over the domain 0 to 1, and then defined to be periodic with period 1. We can express this in the way I've written here. The periodicity is expressed by saying f of t plus 1 equals f of t for all t. The period p is 1, and the angular frequency variable omega, which appears in the trigonometric functions sine and cos in the Fourier series, will be 2 pi over p, and hence, in our case, just 2 pi. It's not my intention to evaluate the full Fourier series for this function, but I just want to discuss some general features of the integration that might prove useful. Remember that to find the Fourier series we would have to calculate the coefficients a0, an, and bn. On the next page I've written down the formula for the an. Recall that the an would be the coefficient associated with the cosines in the Fourier series. Notice that the integral involves the linear function t plus 2 multiplied by a cosine. Typically this would require integration by parts. We'll do that by hand in a moment, but if you're lucky you might have a formula sheet available. Trouble is that if you do have a formula sheet, chances are it won't actually give this precise integral. It's far more likely to give an integral with only t times a cosine. Let's write out now what you would see on the formula sheet. It's quite likely that you will see a coefficient a inside the cosine with the t. In that case, the formula sheet should give an answer for the integral that looks something like this. In order to evaluate our integral, the right thing to do is to break it up into the two parts, one involving the t and the other involving the constant 2. So we would write a n is 2 times integral 0 to 1 t cos 2 n pi t dt plus 2 integral 0 to 1 cos 2 n pi t dt. We can now apply the formula sheet result to the first of our integrals by putting a equal to 2n pi in the formula. That will give us something like a n equals 2 t over 2n pi sine 2n pi t plus cos 2n pi t over 2n pi all squared. And then we remember we've got another part of the integral, but we can do this second part by hand quite easily. Simply the integral of cos is 2 divided by 2n pi, so plus 1 over n pi sine 2n pi t. The rest would now involve just putting in the limits 0 to 1. I'm not going to do that here. I'd like to re-emphasize here that if we have a formula sheet, then the right thing to do is to break our integral up, the t part and the 2 part. What if we don't have a formula sheet, though? In that case, it is rather more efficient not to break the integral up, but just to integrate it by parts immediately as it stands. 2 integral 0 to 1 t plus 2 cos 2n pi t dt and now I'm suggesting don't break it up. Many students when faced with an integral like this would be in the habit of breaking it up into two parts and doing the t part separately from the 2 part. There's really no need, and it is a little more efficient, to leave the t plus 2 intact. We simply choose in our integration by parts formula u to be t plus 2 and v primed to be the cosine. Once we've made that choice, so that's our choice, we say let that be the case, then it follows 
that u prime is just the derivative of u, that's 1, and v is the antiderivative of cos 2n pi t, that's 1 over 2n pi sine 2n pi t. We can now use our integration by parts formula, which I'm going to assume you know reasonably well, and we end up with the overall result 2. The formula says uv, so t plus 2 times 1 over 2n pi sine 2n pi t, and that's to be evaluated between 0 and 1. I'm just going to tidy that pi up a little bit. And then there's a second integral left, which is the integral 0 to 1 v times u primed. But u primed is only 1, so we just get 1 over 2n pi sine 2n pi t dt. Everything there is multiplied by the 2 that's outside. We've now got another integral to do, but it's a much simpler one because it only involves the sine and there's no t present. So let's write out our next step. We could, if you like, put the limits in here, but I'm not going to do that for the moment. I don't want to do too much at once. So let's just leave the limits unsubstituted so far. Then we integrate the sine and we get negative cos, so that will make positive. And we have to divide by the 2n pi again. So that will make 2n pi squared cos 2n pi t to be evaluated from 0 to 1. The next stage is to substitute in the limits. Before doing that, let's have a think about what might happen. In the first part, we're going to have to put the 1 into the t plus 2, but we're also going to put t equals 1 in the sine. That will make sine of 2n pi. n is assumed to be a whole number, and the sine of whole numbers of 2 pi is 0. Similarly, when we substitute the lower limit 0, we will get sine of 0. Consequently, we are happy to notice that the whole term simply disappears. We don't have to write out any substitution if we recognize that the signs disappear. That leaves a much easier integral to do a substitution with. We simply get 2 over 4 n squared pi squared. Putting in 1, we get cos of 2n pi minus cos of 0, which actually comes to 0. Cos of 2n pi is 1, and so is cos of 0. Let's actually write that out. 1 minus 1 times 2 over 4n squared pi squared. In this case, the an turns out to be 0. There is actually a very good reason why that has happened, but that's another story. It's connected with a hidden symmetry of the function. In any case, my purpose in working through these integrals was not so much to get to the final result, but to discuss the different approaches that you would take if presented with tables or formula sheet, as opposed to having to do the integral by parts yourself on paper. Summing up, if we have a formula sheet, we would tend to expect to have to break the integral up into the t part and the 2 part, and use the formula sheet for the t part. With no sheet, we do integration by parts, but then it's more efficient to leave the linear function intact and choose u equals t plus 2. That concludes my discussion of this topic.